Do not be afraid. The one that you are looking for is not here. He is risen. Go now and tell his disciples, especially to Peter, that he will see you in Galilee. Today, dear people, we celebrate the great feast of our faith. The feast of Easter. When we celebrate that that Christ, that we walk with him through the Lenten season, and we also heard during this Holy Week how much he has to undergo and suffer for our sinfulness. As we walked with him yesterday in the journey to Calvary, a horrible death that he died, the words that he gave us from the cross, today we come together to celebrate the fulfillment of the promise that he who died is now alive. If you look at the readings we read tonight, the gist of them all is love. But that love has to be also understood by each one of us that we have to do something on our part. And that is to avoid sin. We heard in the third reading especially how God to the prophet Ezekiel say I have really so my people going after foreign gods. They did abolition. They turned away from me. And although I let them go and spread and, and be uh, dispersed among many nations, I will bring them together. Because I will promise, my promise that I make with them on Mount Sinai, I am their God, they will continue always be my people. This is the feast of the penance, of the sacrament of penance. Today we celebrate the institution of the sacrament of penance. That Jesus died and rose for one reason. So we will, who are dead to sin will be saved from that enslavement and give us the promise by his resurrection that we one day will be with him in heaven. When they come, the woman, early Saturday morning at the tomb, they found it open and empty. They pierced in and they saw these angels talking to them. Whom are they looking for? If you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, he is not among the dead. He is risen. And then he said to them, go and tell Peter. Now many of you say, why Peter? Because Peter is the head of the church and he is going to speak about that great mystery in that great sermon that he is going to give when he is endowed by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The Christ we put to the cross is the Christ we preach to you. He is alive. In his name alone there is salvation. So you see, the primacy that God gave to the church comes from the office of Peter. Because Peter is now the vicar of Christ on earth. And Peter is the one now in the name of Christ who is going to lead this church in this pilgrimage that we have to her destination. When I speak about Peter, I speak about all the successors of Peter. And that's why tonight we came to vigil. That's why tonight we came to read from the Old Testament. To see in a very special way what God has done. God create everything, whether those things that we see or those we don't see. He create everything so beautiful that after He create the heavens and earth and all that fill them, He create the masterpiece of His creation. And that was the human species, the human man, the human human. And when He create that first Adam, he have in mind that Adam, that second Adam who is going to come in the world, his son Jesus Christ. 
And that's why he created him so special. In fact, scripture said to us, he created him in his own image. And that God said, everything is good. And as I work for six days, that seventh day is mine. And keep that day holy. Because holy is that day. But I'd like to focus today on that very third reading from the book of Exodus, which is the highlight of this evening. We know that the Jewish people, because of famine, they have to recourse to Egypt. And there we know that Joseph, whom they, the sons of Jacob, whom they sent to Egypt, was there as a second in command after Pharaoh. And as he was distributing the wheat, he recognized his brothers. And after his techniques and so forth that he played with them, finally he was united with his father, Jacob. And for 400 years, 450 years, the Jewish people lived in the, island, in the, in the, in the country of Egypt. But then, when a Pharaoh, who did not know Joseph, it means he did not know what happened, and how Joseph rescued them from that great famine, they begin to persecute the chosen people. And God heard the cry of these people as they were hard in that sun, baking clay and make, 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 make uh, uh, bricks to build the towns for the Pharaoh. And while they were praying and also asked God for intervention, God sent Moses to them. And after he instructed them and plead with God and deal with the Pharaoh, finally, Pharaoh was so fed up. When he woke up one morning and he found on his very bed of his son, his successor to the throne, dead. He was so beside himself, he was so frightened, that he said to Moses, go and leave this land before anything else will happen. And the cry of the, of the Egyptians who lost their first son. And as the Hebrews left, they were now crossing the Red Sea, a different way how to go about to the pa Palestine. Then they came across the Red Sea. And we know the story. How Moses was asked by God to lift up his staff and make the sea part so the chosen people can walk in dry land. And when they turned around and they saw the chariots of Pharaoh and their charioteers coming after them, they pleaded with Moses, we are done. But God, God through Moses again lift up his staff and bring the sea and drown all those men and their charioteers in the sea.